like to play, huh? Old love over there loved to play. We were great together. Lasted a few months we did until I cut her tits off. G'day everybody and welcome back to the Gulag. My name is Ryan and if you're new here, we open Pokemon cards and tell gruesome, grisly, true crime stories out of Australia and New Zealand. Now if you've heard that quote before, chances are you've seen the famous Australian box office hit Wolf Creek. But Wolf Creek is assumed by everyone that it was about Ivan Malat. But Ivan Malat operated out of a forest, not in the middle of Australia. So whose crimes was Wolf Creek imitating? Well, that's what we're going to be discussing in today's episode against Peter Dupas, also known as the Melbourne Mutilator. So, without further ado, let's open some cards and let's go into today's story. Alright everybody, let's get stuck into today's story about Peter Dupas. Now, Peter Dupas, also known as the Melbourne Mutilator, he was born and raised in Sydney, New South Wales. Now, he had a very normal home life with a very hardworking father and a stay-at-home mum looking after one of three kids, being Peter Dupas and his two siblings. He was born on the 6th of July, 1953, making him 70 years old today. Peter Dupas is currently still alive and serving his life with no parole sentence. Now, Peter Dupas in his early life, Peter was very known to be outgoing, outspoken, very rambunctious and full of life as a kid. But it wasn't until he was a teenager that red flags started to pop up all over the place. See, when Peter was just 15 years old, he was cutting vegetables for his mum in his kitchen at home. Now, the knife that he had was too blunt to cut through the sweet potatoes and the potatoes that he was given direction to cut up by his mother. So he casually walked over to his neighbor's house, which were a very close family friend on the neighborhood. Now, the neighbors have known Peter since birth, so they were very close with him and loved him like a stepson. Now, when the neighbor opened the door, Peter was there and he asked if he could please borrow a sharp knife to cut the potatoes with. Not thinking anything of it, the neighbor went in, grabbed the knife and gave it to young Peter, where Peter then sprung into a frenzied attack trying to kill his neighbor. Now, his neighbor, she received cuts on her face and a stab wound to the back of the neck and multiple stab wounds to the hand. Peter Dupas was disarmed of his knife, being an adult versus a 15 year old, and he casually walked home like nothing happened. Now, when the police later rocked up and interviewed Peter, he admitted that he, he did the attack and he did remember the attack, but he cannot puzzle why he did the attack. He said, I do not know why I attacked her. I love her like a mother. I just felt the need to do it. So put on some serious medications and watch. He was then given 18 months probation as a juvenile and just kept a close eye on. Now we're gonna fast forward a few years in the early life of Peter because on the 15th of July, Peter broke into a woman's home and raped her at knife point. Now this was a huge shock. This was believed to be the start of his reign of terror. He was sentenced to 12 years imprisonment for this crime. Uh, where when he got out after seven years, it was only four months after the release date where old Peter was straight back in the slam. Because Peter got heavily intoxicated and bought some drugs and went on a three day bender assaulting over four different women. Now the assaults on these women were minor bruising and cuts and being manhandled. He did not use any weapons with these four women and he was very sloppy and intoxicated, meaning all of the four women did thankfully get away because God knows what would have happened to them if they didn't. So after he was eventually caught from his little three day bender assaulting four different women, 
he was finally thrown back in the slammer where he served a another additional seven years now in that seven years in prison peter did find love he met his wife which was a mental health nurse by the name of grace mcconnell uh they got married whilst they were in prison uh she quotes from an interview that he was a model prisoner and a model husband but the moment he got outside the walls he became a model monster which eventually, after his release, they didn't work out full time being a couple. They broke up. And then there was a five year gap where Peter lived a quite normal life. That was up until the 19th of April, 1997. Now, this was a shock to the nation when Nicole Patterson, she was 28 years old and a youth counselor. She lived in a residence by herself in Melbourne, Victoria, when the neighbors reported that they could hear her screaming from her residential home at nine to 9.30 in the morning. Now, they said the screaming was continuous. It was, it was half an hour worth of screaming, but no one had called the police until the screaming stopped. When the police made their way to the residence, they opened Nicole's door, which was unlocked, where they found Nicole on the floor, stabbed 27 times in the stomach and in the neck and in the head. The sickening part and the signature where he got the nickname, the Melbourne Mutilator came from, was he cut their breasts off. Now, Nicole's breasts were never located, which comes into his later murders, as it was believed that he ate them. On the 4th of October, 1997, so a few months later, there was a 40-year-old sex worker by the name of Margaret Mayer. Now, she was working outside of a Safeway supermarket in Melbourne, where she was known by local police authorities and known by the local ambulance to always have worked that block for the last five to six years. Now, it was in the early mornings following that midnight attack where they found Margaret behind a dumpster with cardboard boxes over the top of her to disguise her. Now, when the worker removed the boxes, he was mortified to find Margaret naked underneath the boxes and had been beaten to death with a Besser brick. The police did the report on the body and the blunt former tross had been to the left side of her face on her eyebrow, caving in this side of her skull, and also took multiple hits with the brick to the teeth. Now, this also leads to the mutilating side of things where he cut off her left breast and shoved it in her mouth. Now, as soon as the police got to the scene and they saw the breast that cut off, they knew they were dealing with the Melbourne mutilator. And this is where, my friends, you get the name a serial killer. Which leads me to the third murder and the end of his reign of terror, where a young lady by the name of Marissa Halvegas, 25 years old, was visiting the grave tombstone of her dead grandmother. Now, she was kneeling down in front of the grave where she was found naked and she had been stabbed a whopping 87 times. Now, all of these stab wounds were to this woman's breasts. There were no other stab wounds on her body except in the breast region. They knew straight away they were dealing with the Melbourne mutilator as he had attempted, kind of like a surgeon, to remove the breast. But with the amount of stab wounds, it was rendered pointless. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. That's going to be a wrap for today's story. Make sure you hit the bell notification so you get notified on our daily uploads. All right. Thank you for watching. Until next time.